Hi guys, I'm Liam Barry. Welcome to Alcan ADV. Now today we're going to go into the first of a series of videos that we're going to look at here on riding the Alaska Highway and uh, what it takes to do it, how to plan for it, uh, different tips and stuff that I've learned. I've done it um, about eight times now. Um, only two on a motorcycle, down and back up, but uh, I've gone uh, out with my family in a car a couple of times. It's a road that has its own unique set of challenges, um, but it's very worth it if you if you take precautions and uh, and prepare for it right. So, anyway, we'll get into all that right after this. So the first segment in this riding the Alcan series is going to be uh, time, what to plan for, what to expect as a time frame on the Alcan. And uh, before we do this, we got to get into uh, where are you? And so I'm assuming you're somewhere in the lower 48. You've got to give yourself time enough to get to the Alcan. The Alcan doesn't start uh, at the border of Canada. It starts way up in Canada, and so you have to figure out where you're going to enter Canada. This presents a unique set of problems because uh, in Canada, gas is a problem. Gas is one, incredibly expensive, and two, doesn't power whatever vehicle you have nearly as well as good old American gas. And so, um, what I try to do usually when I go through Canada is uh, I fill up right before I leave the U.S. into Canada, and I make my time in Canada as short as possible. So when you're getting to the Alcan, you have a couple of options. Basically, you can go west of the Rockies or east of the Rockies. The, uh, the biggest difference here is that you're gonna have more time in Canada uh, if you go east of the Rockies. And so what I usually do, or what I have done in the past, and what I recommend doing is if you're going to cross, say you're in the Midwest somewhere, to go up go up to Montana area cross in the US until you get across the Rockies and then go straight up you may add a few more miles but you're gonna save a whole lot on gas and uh, the roads are fine going straight up through Washington and, and whatnot to get to Dawson Creek which is where the actual Alaska Highway starts so when you're going up into Canada uh, assuming you're going up through Washington uh, main border crossing you're going to go through is the Okanagan crossing. It's in the Okanagan Valley uh, and there's a bunch of big lakes and a lot of vineyards up on the Canadian side. I guess it's a big wine uh, area. Assuming you're on a motorcycle you may want to check out a couple of the smaller border crossings uh, slightly east of the big Okanagan crossing because I've been on some of the roads um, east of the Okanagan Valley in that area and they're absolutely gorgeous and wonderful for motorcycles so um, do check out a couple of the smaller crossings be aware though that they will close down at night they'll close about five o'clock sometimes four um, and that was where I got stuck uh, when I came down south or north to south um, basically the border crossing closed the little one that I was intending to cross at and so I had to go west uh, to the Okanagan crossing and come down there anyway so check those out. When you go up uh, north from any of those, you're going up to Prince George. Prince George is the first major city um, that you're going to come to, and it's pretty much, it's got a road coming in from the south, coming in from the north, coming in from the east and the west, and, and that's what Prince George is. It's a big city, um, at least in my small Alaskan mind, but uh, you're going to come into it one way or another. Now, if you did decide to cross into Canada uh, east of the Rockies, you're going to miss this altogether. You'll just go north and cut straight across into Dawson Creek. But uh, if you don't, Prince George is where you're going to hit the Alcan from. Uh, from here, you have two options. There's a highway called the Cassiar Highway, which is not part of the Alcan, but it's kind of like the Alcan. And it goes north uh, and hits the Alcan kind of in the middle. It's, it's not quite the middle, it's like a third of the way up. It's a gorgeous drive, 
The road is not near as built up or as well maintained as the Alcan. It's a shorter road, and if you really want to get that feeling of being out in the middle of nothing, um, the Cassiar Highway is a good good road to do it on because it is it's like 200 and some miles of absolutely nothing. There's like one town in the middle of it that has a hotel, and that's it. So uh, I took that road on the way down. And what you're going to do for Prince George, you have two options. You can either go west and eventually turn and take the Cassiar Highway, or you can go straight north and uh, hit Dawson Creek and go west on the Alcan. So the Alcan starts at Dawson Creek, but you can get to it on the Cassiar. That's about as much of the Cassiar as, as you really can know. Uh, it's a great ride. I rode down on the Cassiar and back up on the Alaska Highway just for that guy, but because I haven't rode the Cassiar before. Um, but from now on, we'll assume you're just going up the normal Alcan. In this case, from Prince George, you're going to go up to Dawson Creek, which is the start of the Alcan. The Alcan actually started a little farther north, but um, they put a signpost in Dawson Creek that says, here's mile zero. So when you're there, uh, you got to go. There's a little museum. It's, it's a lot of neat stuff. And, uh, and there's a signpost that says, um, mile zero, the Alaska Highway. And there's also this other signpost that's out in the middle of an intersection, basically, that says, uh, this is mile zero right here, which you have to jaywalk to get out to it, but oh well. So from there, you're going to go uh, north, and Fort St. John is only about 40 miles up, and so it's, it's almost, I mean, connected in a way. That's the way Alaskans look at it. It's only 40 miles away. It's the same town. But uh, it's, it's the last uh, big town you're going to get to uh, before you get to Fort Nelson. This is something we're going to cover in another segment of this is lodging, but it comes into play here as far as time, how far you're willing to go in a day. And uh, a lot of that comes with where you want to spend the night. If you're going to spend the night in a hotel, you can go from Dawson Creek or Fort St. John, clear up to Fort Nelson, spend the night in a hotel, but that's going to be the only hotel between you and either a little dive motel way up on the Alcan, which I'm not discounting, there's some good ones, um, or Whitehorse, which is the next big town. So between cities, you generally have a day. And uh, so from the start of the Alcan at Dawson Creek, you can get to Fort Nelson in about a day. Um, it's a fairly long day, but it's completely doable. Uh, from Fort Nelson, you can get to um, Whitehorse. It's a long day. That's, that's a tough day, but it's doable if you don't leave at noon. You know, if you leave earlier in the morning, you can, uh, you can generally get there 9 at night or so and, uh, and still get a hotel. And from Whitehorse up, uh, it'll take a day, but you can get to Tote and Toke is in Alaska. It's the last um, stopping point on the Alcan before you either decide you're going to go north or you're going to go south. Uh, it's not the end of the Alcan, but we'll get to that in a minute. So if you're hitting big cities, that's what you're going to do. Uh, if you want to see the sights a little more and spend the night in campgrounds, uh, you have options everywhere. And especially if you're on a motorcycle, you can stay in any gravel pit anywhere. This is especially true north of, say, Fort Nelson, uh, because the gravel pits get a lot more and it gets a little less populated. Uh, it's more the wild backcountry, and people don't mind you sleeping in a in a pullout or you know stuff like that. Nobody's going to come and bother you. Uh, south of Fort Nelson, I might get a little worried uh, that somebody's going to come and say, "Hey, you can't be here" or something. And plus, there are just not that many um, gravel pads or old airstrips or gravel pits uh, that aren't currently being used by the oil business. So I generally don't like to sleep there, but um, north of Fort Nelson, you should be great. Uh, there's plenty of campgrounds and there's a lot of little neat places to stop and see if you want to do that, which I'll put in right here. If you're riding the Alcan for the first time on a motorcycle or even in a car, you should definitely stop and see uh, as much as you can. There's all kinds of history here, um, dates from before World War II. A lot of the Alcan was already there, or generally the route was there, uh, used by trappers and used by uh, traders to Alaska, the Trail of 49. 
uh, when the gold rush happened in Alaska. This is generally the route they took. Um, I think they went up north into Dawson City, but the, most of the Alcan is on their, their road. And then in World War II, the Alaska Highway was born because we needed to get to Alaska by land. Anyway, there's all kinds of little uh, neat stuff that you can see on, this, on the way uh, and little bitty towns and it's definitely worth the time to just stop and see what you want to see. So I would definitely recommend doing that even if you're going to take days longer. So, assuming now that you're going to stop and see things along the way instead of just beelining it through and taking pictures off the side, um, that three days stretches out a bit. You're going to go four, five, six days even if you want. Um, that's the general. Five days is going to give you plenty of time to stop and see the sights, smell the roses, and you know, camp wherever you want. From Tote, you're going to go up to Delta Junction, which is the end, official end of the Alaska Highway. There's a sign there that says this is the end, so I guess it's the end. Um, originally, the Alcan went all the way up to Fairbanks, which is the final stop uh, in the Lend-Lease program. Uh, in World War II, when we were sell uh, sending airplanes to the Russians, we would fly them up, and Fairbanks was the last stop before Russia, and so that's where we would paint the red stars on, and um, I think Russia flew their pilots over, and we could uh, you know, switch pilots out, and Russian pilots flew them over. I'm not sure about that, but anyway. So originally, the Alcan went all the way to Fairbanks, um, but now the official end is in Delta Junction. So you're in Tok now. What do you do? Tok is basically one road going through town and another road splitting off of it. That's Tok. Um, when you get to Tok, I would spend the night, go to Fast Eddie's restaurant. It's it's the place to eat. Um, and now you got a decision to make, and hopefully you made the decision a long time ago. Whether you're going to go um, straight, which is west, basically, a little northwest, uh, to Delta Junction and then Fairbanks, or if you're going to turn immediately and go south on what's known as the Tote Cutoff, um, and that'll take you down toward South Central Alaska, Anchorage, uh, the Kenai Peninsula, Matsu Valley, and all that stuff, and uh, you can go to Valdez from there if you want. There's, there's all kinds of options. And, uh, Basically, if I was coming up for the first time, I would probably go straight. I would go through to Fairbanks and see Delta Junction and Fairbanks, and then from Fairbanks, because you got to see Mount McKinley, of course, so from Fairbanks, you go down on the Parks Highway, which takes you straight through Denali National Park. And if you're lucky, you'll get to see the mountain and all that, but there's all kinds of neat stuff to do. And you kind of make this loop. Uh, also, if you're going to try to uh, do the Dalton Highway, you're going to go up to Fairbanks anyway because that's where the Dalton Highway starts. From there, you're going to Anchorage and South Central, and, and from there, it's pretty much Alaska's playground. The Kenai Peninsula is fishing and hunting and, and flying and recreation and, and all everything you could possibly imagine as far as the Alaska life. And uh, as far as getting there, you'll have from Tok to Fairbanks is going to be a day. Fairbanks to Wasilla is an awful long drive. And so I would say give yourself at least two days from Fairbanks to Wasilla Anchorage area. That'll give you enough time to generally see what you're gonna to wanna to see, uh, stop at Denali National Park, have a burger, uh, maybe even spend the night right there. It's, it's kinda of expensive because it's in the park and all these big hotels and everything, but you know, it's dual. And, uh, and then you can drive into Wasilla, drive into Anchorage, um, refreshed and, and all that stuff. And from South Central, uh, on the way back out, uh, I would say probably just head straight to Tok, and that can be done in one day if you plan it right. So what I didn't cover is the time from actually when you cross into Canada to Dawson Creek and start the Alcan. I would make it two days. I've done it in two days. Um, it would be a really long drive if you do it in one day. The thing is, you never camp right on the border. There's campgrounds everywhere, but they're not right on the border. And so you're gonna camp somewhere down in Washington, and then you're gonna camp somewhere up in Canada. And so uh, crossing the border is in the middle of the day somewhere. So from camp, you go up somewhere into Canada and spend the night, and then you can make it to Dawson Creek in a day okay. And that brings us to our total um, time schedule. And this is not gonna include the Dalton Highway because I have no idea how long that takes. Um, 
to drive because I haven't done it. So, assuming you're gonna start in Washington and go to Dawson Creek, there's two days. Give it four days on the Alcan itself, that's six days. And, uh, and that stops at Toke. And then what did I say? Toke to Fairbanks is seven, Fairbanks to South Central is nine. Um, and then South Central back up to Toke would be 10. Another three, another four going down is 14, and two more is 16. So that's 16 days of just driving to get you from the Washington border up around Alaska, the, the loop is basically just a circle of roads that goes around Alaska, that's, that's what Alaska is. And then back down to Washington. After that, you're gonna have to figure out what you wanna do in Alaska, and I can't tell you that because everybody's different. So this should give you some general idea of the time involved in uh, making a trip from somewhere in the lower 48 up to Alaska and back. Um, one thing here I wanna really point out and stress hard is there's a resource uh, for doing this. It's called the Mile Post. Uh, might be the Alaska Mile Post or whatever, but it's a book, it's about that thick and it's a regular like magazine size and it's got a little tiny print it's the bible of alaska travel it's got every road in alaska it's got most of the roads in canada that you get to the alcan from and it's got the alcan and what it is it's a mile by mile here's what there is to see here's what you might want to stop here's a campground here's a town here's the services they have and uh, and they update it every single year and so um, if you're gonna even think about doing this, I would highly recommend, I mean, on a motorcycle, you're not gonna take it, but rip pages out of it, take pictures of it, do whatever you want, but have one and study it before you go. And that pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, this is the first installment in the series. Uh, in the future, I'll be talking about gas, lodging, um, money, food, all that stuff, and. Uh, should hopefully be some some information in there so stay tuned for that uh, also if you like this or uh, if you have any uh, ideas on, on what you might want to see go ahead and put a comment down there I'd love to hear from you and uh, until next time you guys ride safe and I'd be really excited to see what you plan uh, for this next riding season so uh, take care and we'll see you next week